Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars. Learn the Sky is now on Patreon, so if you would like to support this channel in order to learn more about the sky, please visit our Patreon account. The link is listed below. We are also offering new online courses, so if you're interested in learning about the sky in greater detail and would like a guide to help you walk through the sky, please visit LearnTheSky.com and check out our online courses. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video, we'll learn about how to find the constellation known as Canis Major. Canis Major is an ancient constellation, and the earliest records date back as far as from Mesopotamia. It was included in Ptolemy's 48 constellations in the 2nd century and is still counted among the 88 modern constellations. The name Canis Major is Latin for Greater Dog, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. It's best seen in the winter months in the Northern Hemisphere. Canis Major is fairly easy to spot due to the bright star known as Sirius. And Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky. It's also fairly close to us in distance when compared to everything else. So knowing this, it helps you be able to spot Canis Major. So what are the best ways to find it? You want to be able to use Orion, and Orion is one of the most recognizable patterns in the winter sky. Here's Orion, and you want to use the belt stars right here to lead you down towards Sirius. The star Sirius is part of a winter triangle asterism, and remember an asterism is not a true constellation, but a pattern that helps you identify other constellations. So the winter triangle includes Sirius, it includes Betelgeuse, located in Orion, and Procyon in Canis Minor. The Milky Way also runs through a portion of Canis Major, so this is a great opportunity for you to find some interesting celestial objects within this constellation. Let's examine a couple legends that are associated with this constellation. And remember, there is no one true constellation story for any star pattern, as the legends of the stars vary depending upon the culture and place. So in Greek mythology, the legends of Canis Major are complex. Virtually every dog featured in Greco-Roman mythology has been associated with this constellation. Canis Major, along with Canis Minor, are often identified as Orion's hunting dogs, and this makes sense since they're situated so closely together in the sky. One of the main legends about Canis Major is that of the mythological dog known as Lelaps. This canine was said to capture anything that it hunted. Lelaps was a gift from Zeus to Europa and has also been identified as the Hound of Procris. King Minos also possessed this dog at one time, too. But one of the most well-known stories is that of the Tumescent Fox. In one myth, Cephalus took this dog to Thebes to hunt down a fox that was causing some trouble in the area. This fox was extremely fast and was destined to never be caught. So once Canis Major or Lelaps found the fox and started chasing it, the race would appear to never end because Canis Major was able to catch whatever it hunted, but the Tumestian fox was able to avoid capture. So Zeus himself noticed this, this happening and he finally ended the race, or the chase I should say, and turned both animals into stone. Then he placed both the dog and the fox in the night sky for us to remember them by. So here we have Canis Major, Orion is right here, and then this is Canis Minor. It's possible that Canis Minor was once identified as the fox in this story. Now let's review the pattern that Canis Major makes across the skies. So here is the official star pattern or star map that's released by the International Astronomical Union. These boundaries of the constellation were designated in 1930. So, when you're looking at this map, the obvious thing that you probably notice is the big black dot near the center of this map. And that big black dot is Sirius. And that tells you that the star is very, very bright. And when you compare it to many of the other stars, Sirius really does outshine most of the rest of the stars in this constellation. 
So let's get a look at some pictures that we have. So here there's multiple constellations in this photograph and you probably notice the really bright star towards the center of the photo. That of course is Sirius and from there you want to be able or try to point out the star pattern of Canis Major. We'll point it out in a bit but notice that Orion is towards the right side of this photograph and I want you to be able to use the three belt stars of Orion to point you towards Sirius. So what does this star pattern look like with a photograph? There it is. So it is one of the few constellations that somewhat looks like what it's supposed to represent. And keep in mind that the star patterns of constellations really can vary depending upon the book or resource that you're looking at. I've never seen, I haven't seen one constellation that has the same pattern, except I would say maybe Orion. So uh, let's point out where Orion is as well. And then the other constellation that's located here is Lepus. And Lepus is a rabbit and it's located right underneath Orion. And then you can use Canis Major to help you find this constellation as well. So here we have another picture of the winter sky, and what I'm hoping you'll notice is the winter asterism known as the winter triangle. So those are the three brightest stars, and they make that shape of a triangle. And these three stars are pretty easy to identify, even in a sky with lots of light pollution. So again, use the belt stars of Orion to help you find Canis Major. Okay, so the, the whole constellation is not visible here but you can at least get a general idea of where it's located and then from here I always try to look for the triangle shape head that's located next to Sirius. Sirius is often dubbed the heart of the dog as well. Here we have another look at a star pattern um, or a picture and again you should immediately notice the winter triangle. That asterism will help you identify other constellations. So we have Orion right here we have a portion of Canis Major, and then this little two-star constellation is Canis Minor. So the stars that make up the Winter Triangle are Sirius, Betelgeuse, and Procyon, sometimes called Procyon. Sirius is also part of another asterism called the Winter Hexagon. And instead of the triangle, you can use this winter hexagon to find the other bright stars in the winter sky. So when we're looking at this large sky view of the winter sky, hopefully you can see that there are a collection of bright stars that are here, not to mention some celestial objects. So when we're trying to look for the winter hexagon, here it is traced out for you. And then this is where the winter triangle is as well. So keep in mind that you may not be able to see the winter hexagon if you don't have a, an unobstructed view of the entire sky. This is a really, really large picture that covers a good portion of the sky. Another thing I want you to notice is this hazy area right here. This is the Milky Way galaxy and part of the Milky Way does run through Sirius or Canis Major, I should say. So if we point out other constellations that are here, we've got Gemini, we have Auriga, Perseus is right here, here's Taurus, you can tell because of the Pleiades. Of course, you should know Orion at this point, and Orion points down to Canis Major, and then you use the shoulder stars of Orion to point you to Canis Minor. Now let's examine the bright stars of Canis Major. So of course we have to start with Sirius, which is the brightest star in this photograph. But Sirius is actually a binary system made up of Sirius A and B. Sirius A is classified as a white main sequence star, while Sirius B is a smaller white dwarf star. These two stars revolve around each other every 50 years, and they're only 8.5 light years away. This system is also the fifth closest stars to the Earth, and the name itself is derived from the Greek word Sirios, which means scorching or glowing. This name, however, may have actually derived from a more ancient Egyptian word. Sirius played a really important role to the Egyptians. 
The Nile River was said to overflow at the time of the year when Sirius rose at daybreak. This flooding refertilized the fields surrounding the Nile, and then this time was counted as the New Year for Egyptians. Another story I read about Sirius is how ancient cultures may have thought that the heat from Sirius added to that of our own sun, making it a scorcher of a star. And remember, Sirius is in the daytime sky during the summer months, so I find this really interesting, especially since Sirius is a very close star to us. So if we take a look at Sirius with some magnification, this is what the star would look like through a telescope or binoculars. However, when I view it through binoculars, it's really bright and it doesn't feel too good for my eyes. But when we use a telescope like the Hubble Space Telescope, which took this picture, we're able to see the two companion stars here. So this is Sirius A, the white main sequence star, and this right here is Sirius B, the white dwarf star. But in this picture, you're not able to determine the difference between the two binary stars. It's only when we really have a high power telescope like the Hubble. And if we want to do some size comparison here, when we look at the size of the Sirius system with our own system, we can see that Sirius A is larger than our own yellow sun. But when you look at Sirius B, the Earth is slightly larger than it, but not by much. One star I'd like to discuss that you can't necessarily see with the naked eye, but it is located in this constellation, is called V.Y. Canis Majoris, and it's one of the largest stars known in the Milky Way galaxy. It's a red hypergiant star, and it's very oxygen-rich, which definitely tells us that it's a large star because oxygen is one of those final elements to fuse in a star. Silicon would be next, then iron, but it is just... A gigantic star. Its radius is about 1400 times that of our own Sun. So this star lies at approximate distance of 3900 years light years away and it's it's a variable star which means that its magnitude changes over time. Sometimes its magnitude is about 6.5 and then it can dim to about 9.6. Now the human limitation for seeing stars with the naked eye is about magnitude of six. So this would be, you wouldn't be able to see this with the naked eye, you would need some magnification. But hypergiant stars are just ones that have um, incredible masses and they lose their mass at a very high rate because they're just burning through, they're just burning through their fuel really, really quickly. If we were to take a look at a size comparison here, here is V.Y. Canis Majoris right there and this little area if we zoom in that's the sun right there compared to um compared to this hyper giant star it's like honestly the sun's like one little pixel here so it's just an, an incredibly large star it used to be thought of as the largest star but since then we have found other ones that are larger and this one is located inside the boundaries of canis major in the final part of our video, we'll review the celestial objects that can be seen in Canis Major. So here it is. We've got the different objects located on the star map, and all of these are open star clusters. These objects that I pointed out for you are easy to see with the unaided eye if you have a really dark sky, or they're easier to see if you happen to have a telescope or a pair of binoculars. All three objects that I circled here are open star clusters, and they're often located in the arms of the galaxy and consist of younger, bluer stars. They are also younger in age as well, on the order of millions of years, as compared to billions of years, which globular clusters are usually older stars. Now, there are other objects besides these open clusters to view. You have some nebulae here, and these are galaxies, but you would really need a high power telescope to observe any of these because their magnitude is either of 9, 10, 11, or more. We've come to the end of our video, so let's review everything we learned about Canis Major so far. Canis Major is represented as a great dog, and it's best seen in the winter months and is classified as a seasonal constellation. 
the best way to find it is to look for the three belt stars of Orion right here and then follow just make a diagonal line right down to Sirius. It's really hard to not find Sirius just because it is the brightest star in the night sky. Some of the objects that you can see are M41, which is located right there, I can even see it in this photograph, and a few other star clusters located in this region. I wish you luck finding this constellation. It's one of the few that somewhat looks like what it's supposed to resemble. And I encourage you to seek out dark skies so you can see some of the cool celestial objects that are within the Milky Way that run through this constellation. Thank you so much for watching and good luck.